think we have a Good. question from the studio audience. Yes, yes okay. I'm Helga, and I am an art teacher. I teach elementary and long high school class right now. And I have been frustrated for a long time because um, even in my, sh you know, in art where you think creativity, I don't have, to, you know, the real time to teach it because mm -hmm. I'm having the standards and I'm having this and that and la, 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 especially in the elementary level where they have the kids 45 or 50 minutes. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, when I start, you know, I'm like, yeah, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. It seems, it's this, the school seems to be this huge thing that is not moving. It seems yeah. to be so <laughs> stiff. And I have to say, my school district very proudly has read Daniel Pink's book. Mm -hmm. and, um, and again, it was the administration from the top came down and said, we read, need to read this book. So what's the attitude of most of the people? Oh no, don't mm. want to do that. Mm. So do you have any suggestions what could be done to move schools who seem to be on average 50 years behind what is actually happening? in society and we have this whole topic a couple of years ago how do we prepare the children for the first 21st century right. but nothing has really changed with all the brainstorming over here we have heard that mm -hmm. and we do this mm -hmm. but nothing has really happening mm -hmm. and I, for the longest time I have questions why don't we put kids together with you know the in gardener mm -hmm. the intelligences mm -hmm. and now with creativity mm -hmm. why don't we work with this what would, mm -hmm. what do you have any suggestions what could be doing to infiltrate the schools yeah. to switch. Yeah, it's a great question, and it's a, a large question. and important <laughs> issue. Um, I think part of it, just two quick responses to it. It comes down to policy making. Mm -hmm. You know, the policy makers with respect to education in the U.S., how they set policy directly impacts the way schools operate for example, No Child Left Behind, and what that has done in terms of what schools have had to do with respect to No Child Left Behind. So, so how, do we, how do we start to influence policymakers? Um, you know, I, don't, I don't know, but I think that's you know, something that, that if we could, uh, it would be, I think, would have a direct impact. I think the other thing, too, not unrelated to that, is what you measure, what gets measured, impacts how you approach education. So to what degree are we saying this is really important and valuable and we're really going to assess as an outcome that we're impacting this? Because if you say this is an important outcome and you start to measure it, creativity for example, then educational practice changes because you're gearing up towards that outcome. So how do we change the outcomes that we assess? I'll throw this out as an invitation. I had the opportunity to do a keynote at an international uh, education conference in March, the uh, ASCD, Association for Supervision Curriculum and Development. And if anybody has any ideas you want to share with me that you want me to present to this audience, I would love to hear your ideas. I would just add um, something about the importance of looking at the change literature and looking at those who talk about how to make change, how to communicate change. I think sometimes when we believe something, we think if we tell someone else, um, because we're so enthralled with it, that they will say, oh, yes, and I get that. Um, and uh, William Bridges, have you used the William Bridges book at all, Transitions? Well, I would suggest that anyone who's going to be uh, looking at creative problem solving get into that book because he talks about the difference between change and transition. And we talk about the affective piece, that the change is the actual incident that happens. You move to a new house. The change is when you've moved and you're in this new house. The transition is all of the things that go along with that, new doctors, new friends, new, <coughs> and there are a lot of feelings that go along with that. And when you talk to people about we're going to make this change. Um, he talks about how you help people to make that transition and how you help them to look at, well, what's going to be the same and what's going to be different? And you get them to talk about all of their fears about making change. And so I would suggest that any time we're trying to make a change, that we think deliberately about um, how do you introduce that in a way that helps people to understand the value of it? How do you take in? 
their questions and concerns about making that change. And I know a lot of people have had um, the experience of uh, coming back from a conference where you're really revved up about whatever the content was, and you're going to do this, and you're going to you come back into the environment, and people are like, what? Why? Um, and, and you've had a different experience than they have. And so part of that, I think, is about thinking yourself about how do you get into their experience and how do you introduce what it is you want to um, think about or do in a way that helps them to take it in. So. Well, Dr. Mary Murdoch, Lori Mance, Dr. Jared Puccio, thanks for coming today. And I guess there's just one last question here. When's the second edition coming out? <laughs> Funny you should ask that. <laughs> We'd like to know, too. <laughs> uh, probably my guess would be, um, I, I really don't know, 2011, <laughs> hopefully. All right. So there's still time to, to email your questions and, you know, mm -hmm. get some of the thinking of our alum and our students mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. there, the kind of things they'd like to see. Um, the the pu things that puzzle them, mm -hmm. uh, the clarifications or other ideas they have for what they might think is mm -hmm. important. Sure, yeah, yeah, we're very open to that. That would be great. Yeah. And uh, thank you all for coming. I know we're going to have a very, I hope you can stay for a minute, we're going to have a very quick book signing for those who uh, have their book today. <laughs> so thank you, studio audience. I know you had a lot of other questions as well, and they have them. So we'll have to follow up and, and see what to do with it. The nice thing about you is we, we've got you here. We, we have your questions. We have an angel board to do things on. So I'll have to do a little problem solving on how to, how to make sure that, that more of what you've been asked has been addressed. But it's been a, a great session. Thank you this all the people call-ins and, and people that Skyped and everyone that's taken part of it. Thanks. <laughs>